Okay, in this video, I'm gonna be taking on a pretty epic QOM, Queen of the Mountain challenge. Stay tuned to see if I can get it. Effort up to have a go. I think it was like 30.01. I don't know what the watts were, maybe like 250 average. I'll have to check. Oh, got a good benchmark to start the camp. Hopefully, I can get better from there. My best time is like 26 minutes, so I'm about four minutes off my best, but it was absolutely boiling. I definitely bonked at around 11 minutes, so hopefully, the only way is up from here. But that was absolutely So the Tabiesco climb is one of the most famous climbs in Lanzarote. It's probably the longest climb that there is on the island. And back in 2018, I got the Queen of the Mountain. I was a fairly newbie triathlete. I actually did the climb on a TT bike. It was a bit of a spontaneous Queen of the Mountain attempt. We were just out doing a normal ride and then we were like, mm, the wind is quite good today. It was February, so it wasn't very hot and we decided let's see if I can get the Queen of the Mountain and there had been some competition going on I believe Lucy Gossage did own it and then Sif from Denmark took the Quam and then I believe the following day I took the Queen of the Mountain so I had the Queen of the Mountain from 2018 I decided that because Cube were bringing out this super lightweight new road bike I wanted to see if I could beat my time from 2018. The only thing that was going to make it a little bit more difficult was most of the fastest times on the climb are from January, February, December, like when it's a bit cooler on the island and the wind tends to be a bit less. But the island is renowned for being very hot and a lot more windy during the months of July, August, sometimes September. So I was making the challenge quite difficult for myself, but I wanted to put the new bike to the ultimate test. Tabiesco attempt number two, less than a week on from the first effort. I was about four or five watts higher than last time and nearly a minute faster. So going in the right direction, but that was definitely the hottest experience in Tabiesco I've ever had. Today's gonna to be one of the hottest days on record here in Lanzarote, hitting about 44 degrees. So it was really hot in there, but happy with that effort. And yeah, let's hope it keeps going in that direction. You've probably seen me teasing the new road bike from Cube on my Instagram. It is absolutely amazing. I don't think any of the photos or videos actually do it justice for how amazing it is. Back when I went to see Cube in January, I think it was, we started brainstorming the colorways for what this limited edition version of the Cube Lightning Air would look like. And that was how we came up with this pearlescent, but we wanted it to almost look light as air. And when the light reflects on it, it kind of just bounces off and changes color. We all love the idea. So we decided to go ahead with it. And then actually on my most recent trip to CQ, when we went in the wind tunnel, they surprised me with the bike and it's kind of like an early 30th birthday present. And then we just had a few that's shooting. So here it is. <laughs> 
Can I open it? Yeah. Oh my god, look. This is basically, I think, the first time it's completely So cute! Wow. <laughs> it is amazing. Coincidence that you get 30, we turn 30 this year. We also implemented on the dark field. Oh, wow. So light as well. Yeah. <laughs> now, what is really cool is it's my 30th year this year, but it's also Cube's 30th year. So on the bike, it has like a special 30 emblem and it says Lucy 1993 and Cube 1993. So yeah, that's kind of like a really special link that I have with Cube bikes. <laughs> Go through the tunnel, guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Shun. <laughs> sure, you don't want to use me? I think, yeah, uh, you. My B logo. <laughs> <laughs> Is Lucy doing it? No. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've, you've outdone me, really. So. I think. That's you win. Should be. Should be good. Just let's hope it doesn't. Get older now. <laughs> <laughs> You're making my eyes water because I'm laughing. <laughs> the other really cool thing about the bike is it has Lola and Pickle on it, which is obviously the best thing ever when I'm trying to push massive watts on the bike or I'm doing a hard workout, I can just look down and see Lola and Pickle on my bike. Especially when I'm away training for long times without them, I miss them a lot. So it's really amazing to have them on the bike. Aside from how the bike looks, it is so lightweight. I've had some pretty lightweight road bikes in my time as a triathlete, but this one tops all of them. It feels amazing to ride as well. Like it's just super light, but it controls so well. It's stiff in the right places. You can really lay down the power. And for climbing, I knew it was gonna be amazing. So that is exactly why this challenge was born to take on Tabiesco and see how quick I could do it on this new bike. For a long time, the climb has been closed. It had like a barrier on it okay. because it was like a landslide. Mm -hmm. So it was only last year that they reopened the climb and I was like, oh, like someone could actually probably beat my time now. So I'm like, I need to go make it really hard. Hurry up, hurry up. <laughs> So the Tabiesco climb is probably the most well-known climb on Lanzarote. Most people go there and, and want to take on that climb and ride it. It's 9.59 kilometers in length for the official Strava segment is. It has 527 meters of vertical elevation and the average gradient of the climb is 5.5%. So it's not super steep, but it's got a good gradient throughout almost 10 kilometers. It's kind of like a little valley, so it can be slightly sheltered from the wind so when it's really really hot it is boiling in there because the heat kind of gets trapped in there and there's certain different elements to it because it actually has the switchbacks on the second half i find it quite easy to kind of break it up so i break each part into little segments and generally have like a little checkpoint of what time I need to be at on the way up. And I would say it's probably one of my favorite climbs that I've ever ridden. I've ridden quite a lot of different climbs around the world, but this is definitely one of my favorites. Tabiesco, attempt three. There's two attempts this week, one on Thursday, one on Sunday. And today was 27.50, which is quite a big improvement. I think it was around 29 minutes last time. So over a minute off today. Um, I think the watts were a bit higher, but I didn't have my lap power, so I was just going by the same every second of the way up, but it looked pretty high. So everything is trendy in the right way. Um, felt pretty tired today, I had some efforts before that, so I'm pretty happy with that. And now just roll back. This is the lightning air, which if it hasn't got my drinks on, it is like so light. So we'll make this It'll be a waste of video. We can't actually put it out till I really get the clock. Although you do have I do already own the clock. So it's like a queen of the mountain. Right. Adia. <laughs> Practically local. Get a beer. I need a coffee. We can get a coffee somewhere. Get a coffee. 
stop. See how far we get. On the road. Yeah, so I have actually, according to Strava, and I guess this is only if I've recorded it on Strava, I have been up the Tabiesco climb 61 times. On this particular camp, I went up the climb six times. Every single time I went up the climb, I did a pretty hard effort. I think there was one time where I did it on my TT bike where I didn't go as hard, but five of those, I went as hard as I could to try and get near to my old time or beat it. And to begin with, I was quite satisfied, but I was still quite a way off of the time. But this was one of my main goals for the camp to kind of keep the camp interesting. I knew I was gonna be in Lanzarote for almost six weeks. So it was like a mini goal of mine just to see how quick I could get again on that climb. It did keep my camp really, really fun having that as a little goal to focus on. My Queen of the Mountain is 26 minutes 15 seconds. So I'd like to go under 26 minutes. But we shall see. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna have to have bridge over. Have bridge? I'm gonna have to have bridge. <laughs> I'm gonna have to average over 300 watts for 25 minutes. So it's a big effort. I don't want it to fall off because I definitely won't be stopping to get it. I won't be filming. You'll never get it off. Need the face view, it's very important. Yeah, if it's there, that's fine. Yeah, I can see me, so that's fine. It's off my back. A bar. It is. Manzana, apple, Open all the way. Wallet. Let's put the coffee at the top. Now the sun comes out, so it's going to be a boil, eh? Right. It's time. We'll go round the roundabout and then all the way up. Ready? Nervous. <laughs> See you up there. done obviously multiple attempts at trying to get near to the queen of the mountain or beating my old time each time I was getting nearer and nearer and nearer and unfortunately I pretty much left this attempt to the final hour like the last day of my training camp and unfortunately there was a Kalima which if you don't know what that is it basically means the Sahara sand has like come over to Lanzarote has been blown over and that can make it extremely hot. So there was adverse weather heat warnings and we knew it was gonna be really, really hot. However, the wind was slightly better than I'd had for like my last two attempts. When you go up the climb, there's some points where you are hit with almost a direct headwind. So I was happy that the wind was a bit lower, but when I looked on my bike computer after this effort, it says that it reached 45 degrees in the Tabiesco climb, which 
probably wasn't as high as that because I'm guessing the bike computer was getting hot from the sun beaming on it. I needed to try and keep as cool as possible, but at the same time, I'm going absolutely max for like 26 minutes. We knew it was gonna be brutal, but perfect prep for my race that was coming up in Singapore. Now there is one part of the climb which is a little bit of a nightmare if you're trying to get the Strava attempt because there's a junction and actually when I got to that junction two cars were coming down so I had to sort of slow down a little bit, let them pass and then I could just roll through. But that was sort of my worst nightmare when I was doing this. I was like, if there's full blown traffic, that's gonna ruin my whole attempt. So luckily got through the junction onto the switchbacks and there was a checkpoint on the switchbacks quite near the top where I was like, I really think I'm gonna get this. So I had to dig super deep and then push all the way around to the top. I pretty much know exactly where the segment ends. There's like a green sign. So I was like, just get to that green sign as quickly as possible. It was so close. That's horrendous. I definitely didn't have wind like that when I lost it. Or heat. those bits where it's the wind in your face it really yeah. slows you down yeah and after that big session i just did it yeah. my legs didn't have a lot in them you found something i just don't know if it was enough and then i was pretty confident i'd got it but you never know what gps might have done so i didn't know if i'd got it until i actually got back to club the santa could look on my phone and i had actually got the queen of the mountain Jesus. Cheese rat. <laughs> Cheese rat. Ah. Back 
in January 2018, so it would have been a lot cooler, a lot less windy, I got the previous Queen of the Mountain time, which was a 2616. And on that day, it says that I held 298 watts and the average speed was 21.9 kilometers an hour. So like I said before, I did actually do my previous attempt on a TT bike. So the bike would have definitely been heavier than the bike I'm riding right now. But I also was running a Rota 2 in power power meter, which I know read quite high. Like a lot of the watts I was pushing back then I kind of match now and I would imagine that in the time frame I've made some progress so it was definitely a high reading power meter which kind of would explain why on this attempt where I got the new queen of the mountain my time was 25 minutes 30 I also held 298 watts but I moved at 22.6 kilometers an hour so I do believe my legs are stronger than back in 2018 I'm definitely on a much lighter bike that is made for climbing, so hats off to the Cube Lightning Air. It is an amazing bike for climbing, would definitely recommend. Yeah, so that kind of compares the two different efforts. I would love to give this another go, maybe in January or February when I'm on the island, when it's not so hot and there's potentially even less wind, because I do feel like I could go even faster. But for now, I've improved my time by 46 seconds so really really happy with that biggest goal of the camp achieved although obviously it wasn't the biggest goal of the camp that was to get ready for the upcoming racing but this was really nice to have a goal so i think that's kind of the takeaway from this that if you can have a fun goal in your training it really just helps motivate you and made every time i ride up that climb i pushed it a bit harder than maybe i would have done without that goal Okay, as always, thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and stay tuned for more videos coming soon. Maybe with or without the dogs, let us know in the comments below. <laughs>